it's your boy Dave Scott, aka D Skeezy, aka Deluxe Biggie D. I'll just stop there. I got names that can go on and on. But hey, thanks so much for tuning in with us this morning and joining us for our online worship experience. I know this is our new normal and it still doesn't really feel normal, but we're excited and we're honored that you're spending your Sunday morning with us, whether you're in your PJs, on your couch, or maybe you didn't even get out of bed this morning. Totally cool, not judging. We're just happy that you're here with us today. I wanna let you know about some things that we have going on. Things look a little different, but right now we have actually, uh, feels like more things going on now than we've ever had before. For instance, even though we're all doing the social distancing thing, we have online digital groups that you can join. We have a very large amount of them as well. All you have to do is go to wearetherising.com. You can click on the link there that says join a digital group and all the information will be sent to your email after you fill out that quick card there. You'll also be able to check out a lot of the links below. A lot of the stuff I'm about to tell you about, check out the links in the comments below and you'll be able to see all those kind of things. Uh, speaking of some other things that we have going on, uh, you can actually still give to The Rising. It's very simple. If you've never done it before, you can give it the same website, wearetherising.com, or you can text the number 45777 with the amount that you'd like to give, plus the keyword, The Rising. That's one word, T-H-E-R-I-S-I-N-G, all together, no spaces. Really simple. If you've never done it before, it'll walk you through uh, setting up an account so you can do it right there on your phone. Real quick, real easy. And I wanna let you know too, thank you so much for continuing to give. Giving is actually not just the checkbox that we do on Sunday mornings, but giving is actually another part of the worship experience. So we get together and we sing some songs, we get together, we hear a message from God's word, but also this is an opportunity for us to say yes to God. He's called us to give just a portion back to him. And I know that there are some people right now who are thinking, wait, this is usually the part where you talk about tithing, right? Which is 10% of an income. I don't have an income right now because of what's going on. That's okay. What I'd still love for you to do is to just give something. Give something because it's gonna create in you this practice of giving, of being obedient, and of continuing to worship God with your money. And so even if you can't give 10%, what can you give? And that's the question that I'd have for you. Hey, thank you so much for being with us today. I am really honored and excited for what we're about to experience. We're continuing this series, Life Interrupted, where we're talking about all kinds of people in the Bible, which is pretty much everybody whose life was interrupted. So to help us prepare our hearts and minds for what we're about to hear today from Pastor James, uh, get ready, get comfy, but lean forward as we sing some songs to God this morning. again God I'm begging please again I need you oh I need you I'm walking down this desert road water for my thirsty soul I need you oh I need you your forgiveness is like sweet sweet honey oh my the sound of a symphony to my ears it's like holy water on my skin dead men walking slave to sin i want to know about being born again i need you oh god i need you Take me to the riverside, take me under baptized, I need you, oh God, I need you, and your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of a symphony to my ears, it's like holy. your grace but God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace but 
I gotta need it every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me wanna change And I don't wanna abuse your grace I gotta need it every day It's the only thing that ever really makes me wanna change I don't want to abuse your grace, but God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy. heard this story of a butterfly who was crawling on the ground and she was covered in dust. Her wings were matted with mud and a grasshopper saw her and the grasshopper called out and said, what are you doing crawling on the ground? And the butterfly said, what do you mean? What am I doing crawling on the ground? The grasshopper said, why don't you fly? Like, why don't you just, just let loose and let go in the breeze? And the butterfly Look back at the grasshopper dumbfounded and said, I can't fly. The grasshopper said, of course you can. You're a butterfly. The butterfly looked back at the grasshopper like the grasshopper was from another planet. And she said, oh, that's where you're wrong. I'm not a butterfly. I'm a caterpillar. I've always been a caterpillar. And I'll always be a caterpillar. And us caterpillars, we crawl on the ground. See, this butterfly, had a mistaken identity. She didn't fully understand who she was and because of that she wasted herself crawling on the ground. You know there was this moment over 3,000 years ago, it's recorded for us in the book of Judges. Judges is this ancient book of, of history that the history of Israel is found in the Old Testament but this guy named Gideon has a butterfly moment where God shows up to him and he tells him who he really is but he doesn't believe it. See, in, in the book of Judges, it, it records for us the, the history of Israel before they have a king. And what happened was um, God would raise up these leaders, these warrior leaders known as judges who would rule over uh, certain areas of Israel. They'd, they'd protect it, they'd, they'd care for it, they'd, they'd keep the people safe. Um, and there's this pattern that takes place in the book of Judges. You'll pick up on it in the first five chapters easy. Just read those chapters and you'll see this pattern that happens. What, what happens is, the nation of Israel, these people who, who are called by God as His people, these people who are delivered from Egyptian slavery, these people who were, were given this land to live in, uh, they're close to God, they remember God and things go well with them. But then as time goes on, they start to take God for granted. They, they forget about God and they go their own way. And when they do that, they rebel against God and foreign nations come in and take over and rule over them and they're oppressed and so they cry out to God, God help us, save us and, and God intervenes, He helps them, He saves them and things are good for a while but then they take God for granted again, they fall away and do their own thing and then they call out to God, God help us, save us and then God comes in, He raises up another judge to rule over and, and protect them and this is this pattern that happens over and over again but, but this pattern we see with the history of Israel isn't just about them, it's also about us too, right? I mean. Sometimes people come to church because uh, their life is at rock bottom. And, and by the way, that's a good time to come to church. It really, it's a good time to come to church anytime, except for now, <laughs> when we're on lockdown. Uh, but people often come to church, they'll turn to God when things aren't going well in their life. And they're crying out, God, help me, save me. 
and then they'll, they'll discover uh, that God is calling them to live a new life. He's calling them to greatness, and so they press into that, and things start to go well in their life. Things get better, um, and then they, they hit level ground, and they start looking around and think, you know what, I think I got this on my own. I think I can do this. I'm in a better place now than I used to be. And this is when it hits. They take God for granted. They go their own way, and then things fall apart, and then they show back up months and months later. But, but this isn't just true for people who who will go to church but and, and then stop going to church. This is also true for, for people who stay in church, right? For people who are dedicated to church because so often we can begin to take the Word of God for granted and we don't see the power of God at play in our lives. And, and the truth of that is this, you can, you can show up and sit through a sermon and still stay stuck with nothing to show because you haven't shifted what needs to shift in your life to see the difference take place. And so for, for the people of Israel, they're in this place where they've rebelled against God and they're crying out and they're saying, God, help us, save us. And that's where we pick up in Judges chapter six. See, in Judges chapter six, they're calling out to God because uh, they're under the rule of Midian, this nation. And uh, what's described for us is that the people of Midian would come in, they'd invade the land. And uh, the, the people of Israel, they're living in tents and rocks and in caves. They're like isolated, hunkered down. They're alone in their own land. How many of you feel that way, right? They're hunkered down, isolated, alone. And um, Midian, they would come in and they'd, they'd raid the, the territory. They'd steal the, the cattle. They'd ruin the crops. They'd damage their tents. And so the people of Israel are terrified of the Midianites. And then they, they call out to God. And here's what God says to this prophet. It's crazy. He sends a prophet and the prophet says, uh, basically, this is your fault. <laughs> You're in this situation because of things you've done. Like that's the message God gives to the people of Israel. But on the flip side of that, God's working on a solution to save them. And that solution is a man named Gideon. But as we first meet Gideon, what we find is that God has to do some work to help Gideon see he's the solution to Israel's problem. And I wanna pause real quick because that's what's so great about grace, right? That's what's so amazing about grace. When you and I look at our lives, I mean, Israel was in the situation they were in because of the things they had done. When we look at our lives, we're in the situation we're in because of the things we've done, right? I mean. There's things we regret, there's things we're ashamed of, there's, there's, there's holes we found ourselves in and we dug them because of decisions we made. Now, not all of them were decisions we made. Some of it is the consequences of things other people have done. But for the most part, man, we get ourselves into the trouble that we often find ourselves in. And, and the scriptures say that you and I are guilty of sin. And sin is everything that goes against God. Sin is when we rebel against God and go our own way. And because of our sin, we're separated from God. And that's what we deserve. But God came up with a solution. And the solution was His Son. His Son Jesus, who came and He lived on this earth 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life, a life you and I can't live. And then He died the death we deserve. So that when Jesus went to the cross, He took your sin and my sin on Himself. And when He died, our sin died with Him. And, and, and this is the great gift of God, forgiveness through the life of Jesus. See, when we make the decision to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, that He rose again from the dead, and we decide to follow Him, make Him the leader of our life, we accept that gift He gave us on the cross by being baptized into Him. And I don't know if you've ever made the decision to be baptized into Jesus, but e even though we're in isolation and quarantine and there's craziness going on right now, none of that stops you from saying yes to Jesus. Like none of it stops you from saying yes to God and accepting that gift of grace, entering into that with God kind of life. And so here's how that works. I mean, if you, if you make the decision to follow Jesus, you, you believe in him, you wanna follow him, you wanna give him your life and be baptized into him, all you need is a hot tub. All you need is a, a pool or all you need is a bathtub. <laughs> all you need is a bathtub and, and another believer to come alongside you and baptize you. And when you're baptized, it's for the forgiveness of your sins and so you receive God's spirit in your life. So, so you receive this, this gift of grace and forgiveness. 
And so if you make the decision to get baptized, man, let us know. Like, you don't have to do it through us. We want to help you. And if you want us to help you, let us know. We'd love to schedule that and, and help make that happen. But if you make that decision and you get baptized, man, film it, send it to us. We want to celebrate with you. It's, it's the best decision you ever make in your life, right? So God sends the solution to our sin through his son Jesus, who gave his life 2,000 years ago on the cross. But for Israel, he's going to send their solution this man named Gideon. And I want to show you the convincing God has to do to get Gideon to do what he's calling him to do. We first meet Gideon in Judges chapter 6. But in Judges 6, 11, it says, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Now, pause. We find Gideon threshing wheat in a wine press. Do you, do you know how you thresh wheat? I mean, of course you do. We, we've all done it several times in our life. But just in case you need a refresher, the way you thresh wheat is out in the open on a threshing floor. See, you beat the wheat to loosen the grain, the kernels, the good, the fruit of the stalk. You beat the wheat and then you toss everything up in the air and the wind blows away the chaff, the stalk, the, the, the lighter part that's unusable and the heavier grain falls to the ground. You thresh wheat out in the open, but Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press. See, wine presses were dug down into the ground. So Gideon's not beating the wheat and throwing it up into the air. It's not easy for him. For him to thresh this wheat, it's him painstakingly pulling out the grains from the stalk. So here's the picture. Gideon is in this dug down trench threshing wheat, painstakingly pulling out grain, like he's hiding, he's isolated, he's scared that the Midianites will find him. That's why he's in this place of hiding, because if the Midianites catch him out in the open, they'll steal his grain. So, here he is, alone, isolated, cowering, afraid. It's a pathetic image. And the angel comes, and here's what the angel says to Gideon. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon is alone, cowering, scared, and hiding the opposite of what a mighty warrior would be doing. This is like, if I were to come to you now as you're like isolated and you're like in your pajamas or yoga pants and you're binge watching Netflix, eating chips and salsa, and I'm like, greetings, prestigious CEO. You're like, what? Like the image does not match the greeting. And, and Gideon notices, and he even says something about it. He says, pardon me, my Lord, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? If God is with us, why are we in this situation? Why am I hiding in this wine press? Why, why are things going the way they're going? I wonder, have you asked that question lately? If God is with us, why, why, why? Because we're in a time right now uh, where this is affecting all kinds of people. Maybe it's, it's affecting you with scaled back hours being furloughed, laid off, right? Um, there's, there's scarcity in the grocery stores, there's panic, there's, there's fear, there's anxiety from uncertainty, and maybe the question is, well, if God is with us, where is He? Because I feel abandoned right now. And I want to answer that question. Well, if, if, if God is with us, why is all this happening? The answer is God is with us and He's here. But the truth is, just because things don't go the way you want them to, just because things aren't easy peasy, just because it's a challenge, just because things didn't go to your plan and things aren't how you want them to be, it doesn't mean God isn't here. But what it could mean is that God is using the challenge, God is using the difficulty, God is using the hardship to teach you something, to show you something, to pull something out of you He's placed in you that would never come out had you not gone through the hardship and the adversity. Gideon is threshing wheat in a wine press. He has to pull the grain from the stalks. And God is about to pull some potential out of Gideon he never saw in himself. So he greets him. Greetings, mighty warrior. 
And then Gideon, he says, okay, um, well, pardon me, <laughs> pardon me, but uh, if God is here, and here's what I find fascinating. Um, it says, it says this in, in Judges chapter 6, verse 14. It says, The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So, wait. An angel comes to Gideon and says, Greetings, mighty warrior. That's words from an angel. But then verse 14 says, The Lord turned to him and said, Gideon's like, Hold on. That's not me. I don't know about this. And then God gets involved. And he's like, hey, I'm sending you, so now go. But then, look, Gideon says this in verse 15. Pardon me, my Lord, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Wait, wait, wait. How can I go and save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my family. Here, here's what Gideon is saying. I can't do it because I'm nobody. I'm nothing. There's no way I can do it. See, the angel greets Gideon as a mighty warrior. Gideon says, no, when I look in the mirror, I see anything but a mighty warrior. See, Gideon is in this moment right here where he's been believing a story. He's been believing something about himself, and it's like tugging on him. It's like there's this tug. There's this pull. What Gideon is saying is, I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm the least in my clan. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. That's what's pulling on him. But then God interrupts his life and says, I got a new message for you. He, he says, you're a mighty warrior. You're a conqueror. You are good enough. You are equipped. See, Gideon is in this tug of war now, back and forth, back and forth. I'm nobody. You're a mighty warrior. I can't do this. Yes, you can. There's no way. There is a way. Like Gideon is in this tug of war. And watch. Whatever story Gideon chooses to believe about himself in that moment is what will shape and mold his life and his identity. It'll shape his reality. This isn't just Gideon, right? I mean, it's you and I. Because you've been believing a story about yourself. And you, you, you developed a story when you were a kid, when you were growing up. It's, it, it's things your parents said to, me, said to you. It's, it, it's things you developed when you were a teenager, when you were in high school, when you were in college. Like there's a story that we keep on repeat in our mind and it tells us all sorts of things. I wonder what's the story you've been believing about yourself? right? You're not good enough. You're unlovable. Nobody could ever love you. You're insecure. You don't have what it takes. I mean, if you try that, you're just going to fail like you failed before. All, all those other times you didn't get it right, why do you think you'll get it right this time? See, there's a story that we reply, replay over and over in our mind, and that story shapes our reality. It shapes our identity. This is why so many of us stay stuck. But then God enters into the scene of our life and he says, I got a new story for you. You are more than a conqueror. You can overcome. You are lovable. You're somebody who's worthy. You're the first and not the last. You're the head and not the tail. You can overcome, mighty warrior. And so here we are. We're in this tug of war back and forth. Which story will we believe? Because the story we believe shapes our life shapes our destiny. And that's the story of Gideon. Gideon is, is faced with this dichotomy of what he believes himself to be and who God says he is. And what we find throughout the rest of the story of the book of Judges is uh, Gideon is wrestling. He's taking steps, trying to become the person God has called him to be because God placed some potential in him and he's just trying to pull that potential out. And that's what I believe God is wanting to do with you in this moment, here and now. Hunkered down, isolated, maybe even feeling alone. God wants to show you, you are somebody different than you thought you were. You know, several weeks ago, I was leading a, a men's group and I went through this exercise with them where uh, I asked them, I said, 
Imagine all your, all your dreams were achieved, everything you, you ever hoped for and desired, you had it, right? Imagine you finally arrived. What kind of man would you be? And they gave answers like, well, I would, or, or, or what kind of man would you be and, and what would you have? And they gave answers like, well, I would have peace, I would have confidence, I'd be secure, I, I'd be a man of integrity, right? I mean, all these answers, this is the kind of man I would be. And then I asked them, what's holding you back? Like, what's stopping you from living in that and being that man? What are the obstacles? I gave answers like, well, I'm afraid to fail. What if I try and, and I'm a fraud? What if, what if I, I, I do it and it just doesn't work out, right? The, the, there were these obstacles that were holding them back. There are obstacles that hold all of us back. And then I asked him, I want you to make a statement that that man would make. I mean, imagine you were that man right now. What would he say about himself? And they responded by saying, I'm kind, I'm confident, I'm brave, I am good enough, I am lovable. And then I told them, that man that you want to be, you are that man. You are that man right now. And I can say that because Philippians 1.6, it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. God has placed some potential in you and his desire is to pull that out of you. You are that man. Now it's time for you to live in it. The angel showed up to Gideon and said, Greetings, mighty warrior. But in that moment, Gideon was anything but a mighty warrior. He was a cowering punk. He was scared. He was pathetic and pitiful. But the angel saw the potential God had placed in him and was calling that out, pulling it out, bringing it into reality. Hey, the truth is God has placed some potential inside of you. He's, he's put something in you that you may not see right now, but it's there. So I wonder, as God is interrupting your life here and now, we stay stagnant, crawling on the ground, forgetting who you were called to be? Or will you live in the identity God has called you to be? Gideon, in that moment, in the wine press, Threshing wheat was a mighty warrior. He just didn't know it. I want to let you know, you are a mighty warrior. You are more than a conqueror. You are worthy. You are valuable. You are lovable. You are forgiven and given grace in a whole new life. I don't know if you've seen it lately, but I just wanted to show you. You're not a caterpillar. You're a butterfly. You're not the least. You're the first. You're not some coward. You are a mighty warrior. And it's time to take those steps to become the person God has called you to be. It's time to continue on and listen. I know you think you're not there yet. I get it, you're not. But it's time for you to live in that. So take the steps, continue on. Because we're not there yet. But the journey continues. The journey continues. You're the only answer to the darkness. You're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among
Hey, thank you so much for joining us today from streaming wherever it is you are, from your beds, from your couches, from your chairs, in your PJs. Hopefully you had some clothes on, but hey, it's your house. You do what you want. We are glad that you stream with us today. And I wanna let you know too, if it's your first time with us, uh, we actually have in the comments below, there is a digital connect card. We'd love for you to click on that link, fill that out today. Let us know it was your first time. We can celebrate that with you. Uh, you'll get something in the mail just to say, Hey, also that digital connect card is a great way to connect with us about a ton of different things. In the message, Pastor James was talking about baptism. If you're interested in baptism and you want us to be a part of that, we would love to help facilitate that. And so you can fill out that same card, digitally check that box for the baptism, and we will get in touch with you ASAP about setting something up so that we can uh, baptize you, get you baptized and share that with the world online. And also that connect card is a great place for you to share your prayer requests with us as well. Uh, good or bad, we want to know if there's some great things going on in your life. What can we celebrate with you uh, about? What is God doing in your life that's been amazing? We want to celebrate those things as a staff, as a church, so please let us know. But also, if you're going through some things right now, if things are tough, uh, if things are tougher than normal, whatever it is, fill out that card, send us a prayer request so that we can be praying for you. We can reach out to you and pray with you as well. If you don't want to fill that out, that's totally cool. On Instagram or Facebook, you can definitely uh, send us a DM, best way. Slide into those DMs, right? Slide into those DMs, give us a prayer request, and we'll have somebody reach out to you and pray with you. If you're not already following us on Facebook or Instagram, make sure to hit that follow button. You'll be aware of all the things that we have coming up. I mentioned earlier today that we have digital groups. Those are ongoing for indefinitely at this point, uh, but we've got all kinds of groups that fit all age ranges, uh, lifestyles, whatever it is that you've got going on right now, we'd love for you to get plugged into a group. Because even though we are social distancing, even though we're mandated to stay at home right now, uh, and even though it feels like we are so disconnected, this is actually a time where we can be more connected than ever before. Technology has been a great way to help us stay connected, whether it's FaceTime, Zoom calls, Google chats, whatever it is. Uh, we don't want to go through this alone. And so thank God that we have these technologies that enable us to do this isolation together. Thanks again for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure to, to be with you guys this Sunday, and I can't wait to see you all in real life. But until then, we'll see you digitally. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and the Googles. We'll see you next Sunday.